Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Rodimus 2099 So, um, yeah, I'm a little busy right now because it's raining really hard and my basement's somewhat flooded. Don't worry, it's alright. Got it under control fast enough. So don't worry about that. Anyway, today since, you know, it's been kind of a mess, I'm just doing audio, no video, no inserts of photos and stuff. Sorry, but hey, that's what is happening. I did want to talk about some of my favorite non-Marvel and DC comic book characters, and some that are now owned by DC, but originally weren't, so I still love them. Anyway, let's get into it real quick. So, at number 10 is Exo Man of War. I really like him, I haven't loved most of the stories that he's in, he kind of suffers from the plaguing feel that he just feels a little overpowered to have multiple issues just based on him. Uh, because, after all, he is such a different character. He is one of my favorite characters because of how different he is. You wouldn't see this run by Marvel, because he is so different. He is so hard to understand. I really do want a movie for him, though. I think a movie or a TV show could work really well. Um, if you don't know, here's a brief summary. He used to be a Roman fighter, and he was pretty well-known as that. And then he um, uh, got abducted by aliens, became a part of their... Uh, never-ending slave war, and then donned the suit called Exo Man of War, and then flew back to Earth to find his home destroyed, and now he's in the 20th century. It's really cool, it's like spacey, and then there's hunters coming after. It's really nice. It's a really cool story. He is one of my favorites. I love him. Number nine is Ninjak, another Valiant-owned character, which honestly, Valiant has made some of my favorite comic book characters recently. <laughs> um... I love him and most of the stories that he comes out of because um, he does kind of seem like a very annoying guy to work with. He's very, very sadistic somewhat, and he is very annoying when it comes to uh, his volatile opinions. Uh, I like the character. Sometimes he is a little harder to handle, though, but I do like that he is really badass for just no apparent reason. Uh <laughs> Doesn't have many powers. Doesn't have any, really. He's kind of like... He's not really like Deadpool. He's somewhat like Deadpool mixed with Winter Soldier without the whole forgetting past. Being an excellent fighter and being kind of uh, different at the same time. Now, number eight is a weird one. Lobster. The Lobster uh, in the Hellboy series. Uh, basically, the Lobster was a World War II Nazi fighting guy, a superhero... And he always said, beware of the claw, and then he would slam it on them. Somewhat like how Batman did it in uh, Batman Dawn of Justice, even though really uh, the lobster, I think, did it way before him. And what's funny enough is he comes back as a ghost to haunt Hellboy. Because <laughs> on the day that Hellboy came out, um, he died. I thought that was such an interesting kind of feel for a character being from World War II and being a ghost. And being very... Um, Brought into the modern age, but without his kind, but with his kind of consent. Cap didn't want to come into the modern age. He actually went back, but you know, he enjoyed it. <laughs> um, my number six, six. We're at six, right? We are. I think so. Yes, we're at six. Is the mystery man? Uh, the mystery man from the movie. Uh, I don't. I can't remember if there was a comic on them. I know there was the mystery men comic book series. That was somewhat like Wiz Comics back in the day, where they had Captain Marvel, well, Shazam, um, and they labeled him and kind of just put him under the banner. But I believe that is Blue Beetle, technically, so can't really count him. But the Mystery Men from the movie that came out in 1999, I think, it is honestly the perfecting version of The Boys. I somewhat enjoy The Boys, not so much, definitely not my favorite, but I do somewhat enjoy them to the fact of, I think that they did a good job at kind of critiquing, like, modern superhero stories, but honestly, Mystery Men did it before it was kind of popular to do, so I give them big credit. And, you know, I realize that this isn't number six, but it does take up number... <laughs> it could take up this whole list of them, because there is a lot of characters in it, so I am counting as two spots. Um, they are really interesting and cool, honestly. Yeah, they are good to read. You should read them. Yeah, yeah, you should. All right. Number five is 
definitely going to have to be Abe Sapien. Abe Sapien from the Hellboy comics. He is sort of the right-hand man to Hellboy. He is smart, he is collective, he is cool. I had met the guy who was the body suit actor for him, Doug Jones. Honestly, one of my favorite moments of my history of Bloody Life. And he's honestly very interesting as a guy. Um, he is a spindly body. Um, but he is very interesting. And it is a cool character. He's super smart. But he lives and is inhibited by the fact that he can be underwater. Um, kind of limited to that because, you know, he can't be accepted into modern society. Which I think is really cool. And I think that's what really struck gold with me. I was like, wow, Hellboy is so much more comfortable with being out in the open. And Abe Sapien is kind of forced to not be out in the open. It's one of those things that I really do like. Now, number... Number, 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 number four... Definitely has to be Hellboy. I know, I love Hellboy, but he can't be at the top of my list because of reasons. Um, <laughs> but he is a very cool character because he is very calm and collective. He has the right hand, right hand of doom. There's been three movies on him, and honestly, all of them have been fantastic. I know some people said that reboot was kind of sucky. I disagree. I humbly, 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 humbly disagree. And you know what? Never mind. He's at number five. Number four definitely has to go to the Ninja Turtles. Sorry, I just remembered I was going to put them in this list anyway. Ninja Turtles, honestly, they're fucking amazing. Um, it, it's hard to kind of feel that they are really heroes in their own way, but they are. You know, you'd, I never think of them as comic book characters, but that's how they started. So, anyway, had to give them credit real quick. Number three is Bloodshot. Honestly, I think the movie did a perfect version of Bloodshot, making his origin story kind of sweet and fast, along with it letting future expansion and growth to his character. They didn't focus on the villain that much, even though he is the villain. He's his own worst enemy. I think that's honestly one of the most interesting concepts in all of time, that he is his worst enemy. He is the worst villain. Honestly, I think it was amazing and brilliant how they did it. Yeah, he's just amazing. <laughs> anyway, number two is surprising because I just said I hate the boys. It is Homelander from the boys. I hate the boys. I hate the Amazon series. I hate the comics. Because I read the comics, I thought they were pretty decent. I thought they were decent. They aren't great, but they were a little bit better than I was expecting. Then I watched the show. <laughs> The show is so terrible. Honestly, they did a terrible job of kind of bringing those characters back into the kind of modern age. Because, again, those were really supposed to be in this age. You know, I always, I find the big problems with vigilantes in the modern day. Um, especially with kind of the clumsiness that Euro's going to have. Uh, there was a reason why in the kind of Silver Age was known for being publicly announcing your identity to everybody. Uh, as a superhero, Civil War saw Peter Parker do it as Spider-Man. Something that was very much removed later on in stories. But I think that's honestly the purpose of it. It's You can't <laughs> live right now in this world where there's so much technology, where everything can be filmed, where you can't go unnoticed, you know? Anyway, Homelander does a great job at still keeping that. He is a... Asshole in both versions, and that's good because if you think about it, a guy with too much power will become vital and ill and will become one of the worst people in the whole world because of that much power. So, I think they did a good job of translating that somewhat. And my number one favorite character that isn't owned by DC or Marvel definitely has to go to good old fashioned Spawn. Spawn is amazing, he's one of my favorite characters, I think, in the whole universe. He he was different, you know? He didn't know who he was. We didn't get his origin that fast. And I think that was honestly what made him so interesting. He is also one of the longest-running uh, comic book characters ever. Uh, 300 issues. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, he has kind of... I think what's better about him is he doesn't have iconic villains. The Violator isn't going to ever be a household name. And I think that's the good part about it, because I think the more is not known about him, the more he is interesting. 
I think the fact that he doesn't have a pinpointed villain um, that you can say, you can say anyone's really his villain. You can say the devil, you can say the clown, you can say he is his own worst enemy. He is the villain. And you'd be right. You'd be right. That's the thing about Spawn. That's what's so interesting and vital to him, is that you can say anything about it, and you are right. He is his own worst enemy. He is his own villain. He is not the hero, nor the villain. I think that's what makes him so interesting. Honestly, Tom McFarlane, if you're listening to this, which I hope you are, uh, you have made a character who I think will stand up the test of time. Um, not only being known for his kind of feel, like whenever I watch the Swan HBO series, I cry because I'm like, this guy just wants to have... He, he sold his soul and did something terrible and has become his own worst enemy because he wanted to see his loved one one last time. He didn't know it was just going to be one last time. I think that is honestly amazing. Along with it, Spawn has really interesting villains that he kind of has to stop. Along with it, he has very interesting characters uh, that he has to react with. You know, the Violator, and whenever he's with the Clown, it is hilarious. But you're also like, damn, that guy's just evil. <laughs> I think that's one of the graces and the strong suits of Spawn that makes him so interesting. And I prefer that my character doesn't have a pinpointed villain... That way you don't end up with a Superman Lex Luthor thing, where it seems like every Superman movie is going to have Lex Luthor in it until the day we die. And that's one of my big problems. I don't want the Batman to just become Batman and the Joker. I want it to be Batman and his epic rogues gallery. I want it to be Spider-Man and not just the Green Goblin. Imagine we wouldn't have Sinister Six, which is honestly the best part about Spider-Man sometimes. Um... If we just have one pinpointed villain. I hate pinpointed villains. I hate villains that are just, hey, you got this one villain? He's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. No, you need other villains. You need you need a rogues gallery. Because no hero in the modern world will ever fight someone. Think about a cop. He's not going to fight the same criminal over and over and over again. He's not going to have one person that will always be with him. His, uh, his moiority, his enemy that will always be strictly his enemy. <laughs> no, he's never going to have that. He's going to be way different. That's why I prefer. That's why I like to see. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Rodimus2099, and I'll see you in the next video, uh, where I do something crazy. No, I won't. You know me. I'm not that crazy of a guy. Anyway, I'll see you then. Goodbye.